This is Ellie and you're watching Cold Case Tarot. On the 15th of December 2017, Barry and Honey Sherman's estate agent uh, let themselves into their sprawling mansion on Old Colony Road in a really affluent area of Toronto in Canada. A few moments later, the police also arrived at the Sherman residence. They had received an emergency call from the agent and what they found was a murder scene. They found Barry and Honey Sherman both tied to the railings of their indoor swimming pool. Both had been strangled and both were deceased. A coroner's report later showed that Barry and Honey Sherman, who were worth an estimated $3.2 billion, had been dead for around about 72 hours before they were found. The estimated time of death is somewhere in the evening hours of December 13th, 2017. There was no sign of forced entry into their home and almost no DNA evidence was available from the crime scene. The funerals of Barry and Honey Sherman were spectacular, huge. Even Justin Trudeau attended the funerals. At the time of their deaths, Barry was 75 years old and Honey was 70 years old. Barry was the founder and chief of a very successful internationally uh, distributing generic pharmaceutical company called Apotex, which I believe is still operating. Um, the generic pharmaceutical uh, business is all about copying brand name pharmaceuticals and producing them at a lower cost so that they can be more affordable to the public. One thing that my research on this case has shown me is that Barry was considered to be a thorn in the side of Big Pharma because basically his entire job was about trying to undercut the rivals. Now there's some really conflicting information as to who Barry and Honey were in terms of their character and personalities. They were often described in the research that I was able to see, especially when it comes to the official description of who they were, as being pillars of the community and great philanthropists who were incredibly generous and gave to numerous charities. However, in this research, there's also pockets of information where I was able to, to see that they were often also described, not, not so much Honey, but more Barry, was described as a ruthless businessman who often took very dangerous risks in order to reap spectacular financial rewards. When they died, well, I, quite curiously, um, Honey didn't have a will, Barry did have a will, and in his will he left no money to charity whatsoever. In fact, his will was extremely simple. He named, um, he, he had originally had eight different trustees, which included his four children and other uh, official trustee assistants to help with the distribution of the will. A few months prior to his death, he'd made a minor change to his will. And what he had done is he had limited the trustees to four, which included a couple of his children and then a couple of um, formal executors who would assist in the management of the, of the will after he passed. That's not really particularly controversial. But what is a little bit unusual, given the philan philanthropic reputation of Barry and Honey, was that no money was left in Barry's will to anyone other than an equal distribution between his four children. Now, this um, sounds to me a little bit as though the philanthropic side of Barry was not as much about generosity as it was about tax breaks. Um, because when you are incredibly generous, especially when you're no longer going to be using your money anymore because you're, death, you're dead, uh, it seems reasonable that you would want to distribute some of that to some of the charities that you most love, that you have most contributed to in your life. But if it's no longer a tax break because you've passed and so you stop um, distributing that money to charity, it's a bit of a clue. So I kind of feel as though I've had a, a very quick study when it comes to Barry's personality. 
But there's also um, an issue that comes out of this claim of ruthlessness and risk-taking um, side of his personality. It leads me to wonder whether there's another path that we can go down in our investigation with the cards, and that's whether or not that perceived ruthlessness or risk-taking a dangerous side of Barry may have actually put him in conflict with dangerous people um, over his lifetime. Barry had started out in the pharmaceuticals industry uh, from a very young age. When he was young, his parents both died and he went to live with his uncle. Now his uncle had children of his own. However, they were younger than Barry and too young to start bringing into the uncle's business. The uncle owned a small drug making company and he um, took Barry under his wing. They were very close and he started to teach him the ropes of how to uh, run a drug making business. Barry found his calling, he enjoyed it. And later on when his uncle died, he inherited the uncle's business. Um, and ultimately this became his career. There was a clause in the agreement between Barry and his uncle where Barry would take over the business after his uncle had passed but he would pay five percent of future profits to each of his cousins um, which I think there may have been four of them. Now Barry agreed to the terms of that so five percent of the profit of his uncle's business would uh, be distributed to each of those cousins. He agreed to the terms but he didn't actually carry out those terms and it didn't become apparent to the cousins until they became adults. For some reason that is probably unrelated to this case, his cousins had um, some issues with substance abuse in various different degrees. Uh, some of them had quite serious drug issues Others had minor drug issues. It may have had something to do with the family life. It may have had something that is completely unrelated to anything. But this was something that came up in some of the research. It may have also been one of the reasons why uh, Barry's uncle uh, felt an affinity towards Barry more so than the children because perhaps he felt that Barry was more responsible. It's just sort of something to think about. This issue with the cousins, however, created a controversy in later life for Barry. When the cousins got older, they discovered that that clause in the contract with the 5% profit that was supposed to go to them had never been honoured. And they decided to sue Barry, who had since sold his uncle's business and opened a new business called Apotex, which he subsequently built into a multi-billion dollar organisation up until the day that he died. He was an extremely wealthy man, but none of that had been passed on to his cousins, who all felt that they had a right to inherit, um, to a degree, the same that Barry had, and that somehow they'd been sidelined. They decided to sue, and the cousin in particular, who had the biggest grievance against Barry Sherman, was a gentleman by the name of Kerry Winter. His name comes up later, so just Put a pin in that. The cousins ultimately were unsuccessful and were unable to sue Barry for the billion dollars that they hoped for because the judge determined that they had only been given the right to 5% of the uncle's business, not 5% of everything Barry had built since then. And the uncle's business was much, much smaller and had subsequently been sold. So they ultimately lost their case. But a testament to Barry's personality was that he actually ended up countersuing his cousins who were not affluent people for I think it was a million dollars in legal costs despite the fact that he was a billionaire and they weren't even wealthy. But the judge ultimately reduced it to legal costs I think combined of 300,000. So ultimately they didn't end up in the same um, dire straits that they would have been if Barry had gotten his way. But these are little clues as to how hard-nosed Barry could be because these sorts of behaviours um, ultimately seem to carry with them the possibility of numerous enemies that may have wanted to see Barry's demise. As you can imagine when it comes to the suspicious death of a billionaire and his wife, 
all kinds of speculation and conspiracy theories have arisen from these murders. But one of the most striking claims is actually a claim that was made by Barry's cousin, Kerry Winter. Um, Kerry Winter claimed that he did not believe that Barry and Honey were murdered by a third party. He stringently and strongly um, proclaimed to anyone who would listen, including police, the media, and anyone that he knew, that he believed that Barry had murdered Honey and then killed himself. And to this day, he is adamant about that. He says that the reason why he believes that is because some years prior to their death, Barry had approached Kerry uh, Winter and asked him to kill his wife, Honey. And um, originally, Kerry says that he um, only had one conversation and Barry had only made one request about that. Later on, he says that perhaps actually it had happened previously. But because he was a, a sort of a, a long time drug taker, he may have actually forgotten previous episodes. The way that Kerry describes it is that Barry approached him and said that he didn't love Honey anymore. He wanted to get rid of her, but he didn't want the complication of having to go through a file through a messy divorce. And so he wanted Kerry Winter to arrange for one of his druggy friends to kill Honey. Kerry said that he originally agreed to that. He's actually openly stated it to media. It's been on television reports and everything. He said that he originally agreed to uh, find someone to kill Honey on behalf of Barry because he didn't like Honey either. He said that Honey was an extremely uh, jealous wife in terms of sharing of financials. And she would often accuse um, Barry's cousins, Kerry in particular, of being gold diggers and leeches, people who would hang around wanting uh, some of their money. And so he found her to be uh, a mean woman who um, didn't seem to even want to share uh, any part of her life with, with other people, even family members. Now this is family dynamic, so I don't know what's true and what's not, but Kerry is adamant that Barry said he didn't love Honey and that he didn't like, and that Kerry didn't like Honey either. And so they had agreed to actually bump her off. But then as time went on and he was planning to have this done for his cousin, Kerry got cold feet and went back to Barry and said that um, he couldn't do this and he never wanted to talk about it again and that he wasn't able to carry out Barry's wishes. And originally he said that Barry agreed to that and that um, they never spoke of it again. But I did see um, uh, in my research that Kerry Kerry Winter was polygraphed uh, when he made this claim to the media and they arranged for a, for a um, lie detector test to, to, to be carried out. And the results of that lie detector test was that Kerry Winter wasn't entirely truthful about the discussions that he'd had with his cousin Barry about killing Barry's wife, Honey. Not that it didn't happen, but that it may have happened more than once at which point Kerry actually backtracked and said, well, you know what, I was on drugs. He's a reformed drug addict now, but he said he, he was on drugs and that that may have very well been the case. Uh, and of course, this casts out on the entire story as to whether or not everything he was saying is true. It's just a very strange little uh, section of this story that's worthwhile repeating all by itself. It also is notable that um, Barry's cousin, Kerry Winter, has also said that he hated Barry and Honey so much he would have killed them, except that he didn't. And he said that he often fantasized that he would have killed them and that he specifically fantasized that he would approach Barry unexpectedly in the parking lot of Apotex when Barry was leaving for the day and just attack him right outside his place of business as sort of a, a, a to signify the the bad blood between them because of the drug making business that had sort of come between them as a family. Uh, but he does claim that he is not the person who murdered them. Although when he was advised that they were murdered, 
He said he wasn't at all surprised because Barry was the kind of man who someone would have wanted to kill. It's just, uh, you know, families, families are out there. Now, in um, December of 2021, the case which had been lying dormant with no real lead suddenly came back to life when police um, carried out a press conference and shared very grainy video footage of the night of the 13th of December in the area of Old Colony Road in Toronto. They had in their possession around four terabytes of video data uh, trailing a suspicious looking man who didn't seem to have any confirmed reason to be in the area on the night that Barry and Honey Sherman are presumed to have been murdered. I've seen the video footage. It is very grainy. They say it's only one of a series of different videos that they have, but they've only shared the one because they don't want to provide too much info. And they have um, been tracking the person who appears in the video who's simply walking down uh, the street uh, on a, what looks like a cold evening. So obviously in, in on the 13th of December 2017. And they said that they cannot figure out what that person's purpose is for being in the area. And so for that reason, uh, and because the, the person appears to be suspiciously close on occasion to the site of the murders, they are including that person to be a suspect. They haven't even confirmed whether they believe the person is a man or a woman. Although they said it didn't seem obvious, but I've actually looked at the video footage and I believe it is obvious. I think it does appear to be a man. However, I will keep my, uh, my mind open in that respect. So that is someone else that actually is a person that we can look at. Um, police have never gotten to the bottom of who that person is. So the cards might actually help us to provide some information, some detail on that person, if they are indeed connected to this case. Now, the murders of Barry and Honey Sherman have never been solved. The inheritance of the three billion or so um, dollars has been equally distributed among Barry and Honey's children. And the business has been uh, passed on to long, a long-standing senior member um, of the team who worked for Apotex as per Barry's will. There doesn't seem to be anything suspicious when it comes to the children or the people working for Apotex, but we should keep these people in mind as well if anything comes up in the reading uh, of the cards. Police don't have a lot to go on and despite the fact that Barry and, and Honey Sherman were considered to be pillars of the community. Uh, one of, I think it was the 15th richest people in Canada at the time of their death, with friends like Justin Trudeau, for example, who attended the funeral, and many, many influential people. It's been, um, it's been described that the um, Canadian police have dropped the ball on a surprising number of occasions when it comes to their murders um, and have missed information, have bungled things, have communicated um, badly with the public. I don't know whether that's the case, but it does seem peculiar that something is high profile and people who were so well respected officially in the community uh, would still sort of be in a position where there's very little for the police to go by. The children of Barry and Honey Sherman activated um, private investigation to find out what happened to their parents. I don't know what the leads are there because I wasn't able to find any public information. And they also, I don't know whether it's still relevant, but they also a couple of years ago uh, began offering a, I think it was a $10 million reward for information leading to um, the discovery and conviction of anyone responsible for Barry and Honey's death. So the family seemed to really want to get to the bottom of this. Um, I was asked to do a reading on this mystery. So why don't we put down some cards and see if we can find out what happened to Barry 
and Honey Shimon. Okay, so we're looking at the murders of Barry and Honey Sherman, uh, presumed to be on the evening of the 13th of December 2017. I'm going to do a full reading to begin with, and then I'm going to do some simple three card spreads uh, on a few questions, particularly when it comes to certain types of suspects that or certain you know, certain types of suspects that might be relevant let's take a look at Barry specifically and I think the reason for that is because honey appeared to be secondary to the business she didn't have a will um, primarily she was Barry's wife in this story and everything that involves her involves him as well whereas when it comes to Barry he can be isolated in some ways when it comes to behavior um, relationships and also any of the risks associated with the Apotex business or with his personality so I think that I think it's probably best to make an assumption that the reason, whatever the reason might be that Barry and Honey were murdered, it was Barry at the heart of that rather than Honey. I don't believe that somebody set out to murder Honey and Barry just happened to be there at the time. I think it might be the other way around. Okay. So we're going to take a look at Barry, what makes him tick, the circumstances of his death, um, whether anything arises from any of the potential um, people of interest, for example, uh, pharmaceutical rivals, members of family, people he may have, uh, who may have perceived him to be or, or been on the receiving end of what's perceived to be ruthlessness or dangerous business uh, risk taking. Um, these other relatives, including cousins. And also the issue of that man walking through the area where Barry and Honey lived on the night of the 13th of December 2017. So we're looking at Barry Sherman. I'm feeling um, strangely a little bit... Uh, just towards this last few seconds, I'm getting a chill, but also a stiffness, which I'm, is unusual. So let's just see, like a stiffness in my arms and, and hands. That's a little bit unusual. So it just might be symptomatic of, of something that's going to come out of the reading. Okay. Oh, I haven't changed the camera. All right. So I've done a little shuffle. Let's just finish this off. So we have the signifier, and the challenge card, immediately, immediately points to a certain group of interest. Okay, but I'm, I'll, I won't spoil it for you, let me get the rest of the cards out. So signifier. Um, challenge card, conscious thoughts, subconscious thoughts, the past, and then a um, key moment in time or a significant moment. So the signifier is the six of cups in reverse and it's challenged by the five of pentacles. The Six of Cups in reverse is about um, failing to live in the present, being obsessed with the past and having a problem with childishness, childhood or, um, or a problem child of some kind. 
It's challenged by the Five of Pentacles, which is about destitution and loss. It can be about loss of health, uh, loss of prosperity, and a sort of an isolation from the world of prosperity. You can see these people are poor and uh, infirm and, and frail and unwell. And they travel through a blizzard right past the warmth of a church. But no one can see them. No one's going to help them. There might be a door around the corner, but they can't find it. And so as much warmth and support as there is behind this stained glass window, none of it is being shared with these people. And that is the challenge. What this baseline immediately points to is people who have a grievance with the past, possibly when it going back as far as childhood, about not getting the support that they needed. And this immediately points to someone who may have had a childhood relationship with, with Barry Sherman. You see how the cards are um, just... They, they get to the point very, very quickly. And uh, this is what it looks like. Now, this does not eliminate people such as the man who was caught walking on video. Because even if a member of family, extended family, or, or you know, a very close associate who knew Barry from much earlier in his life, is a person of interest in this case, it doesn't mean that they did anything specifically. They may have hired someone or convince someone, or just been um, co-conspired in some way. But immediately it's pointing to that. So we'll keep an open mind and see what else comes out of the cards. In the past, uh, sorry, uh, in the on the conscious level, we've got the three of um, wands in reverse. And this is about having an investment anxiety, feeling blocked, um, and there's also an element of resistance here. The resistance can be about sort of having a sense of distrust. So there's a real distrust here, but the investment anxiety and feeling blocked and also maybe even delayed results can be relevant in this card. On the subconscious, we have the world in reverse. And the world in reverse, you see, when the world is upright, this is about um, accomplishment and completion of a task. There's also uh, the pause before the next step, but the accomplishment and completion of a task are a big part of this card. When the card's in reverse, it's a much weaker sense of accomplishment, and there's a much lesser sort of version of happiness and success associated with it. Can you see that there's a theme here? We have this um, energy that feels that there's something going way back in the past that just can't be forgiven and forgotten, where there's this almost like being left out in the cold element here associated with it a sense of being blocked and also having a real distrust here um, when it comes to Barry perhaps and this lesser accomplishment now everyone standing next to Barry is going to have a, a sense of lesser accomplishment because he was such an accomplished man and um, someone who's able to build from really very little to a three plus billion dollar fortune uh, is you know pretty accomplished and if you are next to him you're going to feel lesser than that but this is a comparison and this is a comparison card this is about resentment distrust and making a direct comparison about your success and what you're being supported with um, with in a comparison against Barry so there's a there's a real issue of jealousy in this in this reading so far. In the far in the past here we've got the eight of pentacles. This is about training, education, career focus, or change of career. It's hard to contextualize this. I know that Barry was very much a businessman. He um, uh, uh, even from the research that I that I conducted, it was clear that he went to work at dawn every morning and he would be coming home at 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night. So he worked a very long day because that's what it takes to maintain a, a billion dollar fortune. His business would have been complex and, and a lot of it can't be done 
you know, until after hours when people have time to talk and things like that. So he worked a very long day. So I know that career is a very important focus here, but let's put this on hold. And once the next layer of cards come down, it might be easier to contextualize. The um, pinnacle moment here is one with the Three of Cups in reverse. This is about boredom. It's about uh, disillusionment or disenchantment. There's also lack of support here as well. Um, you may also actually include an overindulgence. So overindulgence, lack of support, boredom and disillusionment or disenchantment. I think the, you know, the overindulgence can relate to perceptions as well. And already this card is sort of becoming clearer. You have in the past a man, because we are looking at Barry, who worked very hard and, and got lucky as well, because the fact that, you know, I'm not saying it's fortunate that his parents had died, which is the reason why he ended up living with his uncle, but he fell into a situation where he was given the tools to be able to create a successful life for himself. But he didn't do it by himself. He he worked. You see that you can see this fellow in this card. He's not being handed prosperity. He's earning his keep by uh, working his business the best that he can. But in this card, in this pinnacle moment, we have this sense of overindulgence. And then the disillusionment and the lack of support. It wasn't long before Barry and Honey's death that the court case came about and was decided where uh, Barry's cousins, that's Kerry Winter and his siblings, they lost their case against Barry, that claim for $1 billion, and also had costs awarded against them, which ultimately was $300,000. The overindulgence may be about the perceptions that they had um, about Barry having everything and they had nothing. And also um, the lack of support being, you know, that we are blood and we're not being supported, uh, even though everything you gained in your life ultimately was seeded um, was was as a result of a seed being harvested by our by our father your uncle so there it's still an element there's a lot of jealousy in this reading so far so let's keep going so the way he sees himself the way others see him or the environment in which he sits hmm. Hopes and fears. And then the final answer or the final outcome. So Barry, okay, the way he sees himself is the chariot. This is about um, mediation, negotiation, moving forward with rapid speed. This is about uh, being able to negotiate, being a person, a businessman. So about being able to win friends and influence people. It's funny that it sits beneath this card of um, investment anxiety and distrust of some kind. So this points to something a little bit different. So here we're talking about business connection of some kind and a person who may fall more into the category of someone who's been slighted by the ruthless side of Barry or by the risk taker element. It's just something to keep in mind. It doesn't necessarily have to do with family. We've got a, a cup suite here and a cup suite here, which are about deep emotion. But it's not prevalent because we've got a deep emotion and then we have a prosperity card here. And everyone has a deep emotional feeling when it comes to their own prosperity. Jealousy is not something that only sits within family members, even though this, this reading does appear to be a lot about jealousy, a lot. So we have someone that there, there's an element here of, of, of being a pretty um, talented businessman, but one who isn't trusted and where there is a resentment there towards him. 
The way he's viewed by others or the environment in which he sits here is the five of wands in reverse. And this is about uh, refusing to argue, reaching resolution, and having inner demons. A person who... It, the card sits beneath this mediocre accomplishment card with the world in reverse. So this is a person who didn't do as well as they wanted to do. And despite the fact that they may have actually outwardly stated to Barry that, the re that they've reached some kind of resolution, there's inner demons there. This takes us right back to the court case between the cousins and him. Or some kind of a negotiation where Barry did so much better than whoever it was he was negotiating with. What we have here is we, in this, in this dynamic here, we've got a winners and losers kind of scenario. We have a deep emotional um, sort of resentment based on, uh, it's kind of a financial based jealousy here, a prosperity based jealousy. Feeling as though you deserve more than what you're getting out of Barry. Or that Barry doesn't deserve to be quite as prosperous as he is in, in comparison to you. And there's a real resentment here. In this section here, this dynamic is about there being some kind of a interaction with Barry where Barry was the winner. And the other person didn't quite do as well. And there's, there's a real resentment there as well and as talented a negotiator as Barry might be or as successful a negotiator as uh, Barry might be there's inner demons left behind here following that transaction whatever it might be this can relate directly to that court case with the cousins or some kind of business interaction that Barry had I do believe though that so far from what I'm seeing here, that Barry was the primary target based on his affluence and his success. And that the motive was one of resentment and jealousy. That sits very much in keeping with a strangulation cause of death. It's said over and over again, regardless of which forum you, you choose to follow, that strangulation is about um, a very intimate kind of rage and so when you hire someone a hitman to go kill somebody they don't often strangle them because they're doing something in a mercenary way they'll probably shoot them or you know i don't know car bomb them or whatever it is that they do cut the brake lines or something um, when someone is strangled it's a sustained amount of pressure that's very intimate in nature and it has to come from a place of rage and probably a rage towards that person. So this, these cards are talking about someone who has had an intimate type of um, association with the Shermans to the point where they would have so much rage built up in them that they would physically carry out one of the most intimate types of murder. And it's, there's a lot of jealousy here and a lot of fi financial-based jealousy or, or prosperity-based jealousy. So hopes and fears, we've got the Seven of Wands. And the Seven of Wands is about um, being ready and willing to accept the challenge. The, um, this is an interesting card uh, to have in hopes and fears. I can see that it sits beneath the training education and I'm not really sure how to contextualize this card. You've got, it's almost a joyfulness when it comes to a kind of feeling as though a burden has been lifted. By the deaths by the death of Barry but I may put down clarifiers 
on, for this card. And in the final outcome, or the final answer here, I've got the Eight of Swords in reverse. Now, the Eight of Swords, when it's upright, is about a self-imposed kind of victimhood. This person has blindfolded themselves and, and tied themselves up and caged themselves with the swords and then created this post-apocalyptic um, type of environment for themselves. But they kind of are set free in this final outcome. They find a new way forward and reward um, hard work for the, and are rewarded for their hard work. And that appears here. I don't think I need clarifiers for these cards. The, the deaths, the death of Barry lifted a cloud from the person. And they're almost joyful and feel a release and a relief from their death. And this is not normal, but this is an indication of who we're talking about. So I don't think that it's it's immediately eliminated the pharmaceutical rivalry because that's cold and unfeeling. This is just about, you know, business. And so I think that um, if it was some kind of a hired murder uh, from one rival against another, then it wouldn't have so much emotion in it. So I think we've we've eliminated the um, prospect of it being uh, a rival pharmaceutical company. What remains is someone who feels that they were victim of Barry's ruthlessness, also um, close friends and family, without naming any particular individuals, who feel that they didn't they were treated unfairly because of past advantages that Barry had in his life that perhaps should have been more equitably shared with them. Um, and then we have the issue of the man walking down the street now that was captured in video by police. That man walking down the street would have to be in order to fit the scenario by these cards, would have to be someone who is personally, intimately associated with the Shermans. It couldn't be a murder for hire person because of the intimacy that appears here and the intimate way in which the Shermans were murdered. So let's put down a few cards on these three different remaining leads of inquiry or directions of inquiry. The first one is an unrelated, you know, not a friend or acquaintance or family member, but someone who is connected to Barry purely by being on the receiving end of this risk-taking, ruthless kind of aspect of Barry's personality. This would be an, a business transaction gone wrong or something like that. Let's have a look. Is this, is this a person? No, is this the line of inquiry that police should follow? Did the murderer come from that line of inquiry? Someone wronged by Barry in business. So we've got two of wands, the ace of cups, and the two of swords. Uh, two of Wands, this is about planning decision making and there can be delay here as well. Overwhelming sense of um, compassion, friendship, sense of self. And then um, having a, avoiding the facts, having a fear of reality and, and being sort of undecided or torn in two directions. No, I think that when the cards are providing a no, sometimes what they're going to do is they're going to take me in a direction that doesn't seem relevant to the question. And so I think that no, 
is the answer to the question. So let's look at the issue of inequity in the family and whether or not the murders were as a result. Oh, hang on. Yes. So this is the sort of truth and it's a yes card and it popped out of the deck. So keep that in mind. Um, just finishing my question here, but it appears it's been answered. I will put down three cards for context. Let's look at the issue of these, uh, um, the bitterness in the family. And whether that is the line of inquiry most relevant to the murder of Barry and Honey. Got page of wands. The six of swords in reverse and the queen of cups in reverse. So we've got here a free agent with no ties and the world's potential at their feet here. We've got floods, storms and travel delays. And then we've got this vulnerable, um, needy queen. The storms and floods are about the bitterness and the tension and the arguments. The real vulnerability here is um, so, sort of like a, a neediness. And the neediness can, be, can also be about jealousy and, um, and emotional frailty as well. The Page of Wands is is a is a card of inspiration where um anything goes and i think that there is a possibility here the cards are not being explicit but what they are saying is that you know in the full reading that i did there was this element of being set free at the end an emotional kind of freedom or an inspirational kind of freedom as though do you know what Barry and 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 honey are dead now so life is going is back to being grand again life is groovy once again this is in keeping with that and these cards are about the tension and the strife within the family and also this uh, emotional frailty that appears in there as well which is probably the frailty of the person who feels slighted in the family family tension is still there it's very 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 much at the forefront of the reading I think the jealousy the real no one can be as jealous of someone else as as someone who's intimately involved in them you can be jealous of someone that you barely know but you don't really know enough about them to to have that uh, visceral kind of deep-seated hatred and bitterness it takes real intimacy and knowledge about a person to feel that bitter about them because you kind of know what it is that you hate. When you look at them from afar, you don't know enough to really know what it is that you hate. You just speculate. And I think that this reading has demonstrated that it's a visceral hatred. It's a real bitterness that goes back to a much younger time. Let's just look at this, the relevance of the man who was caught walking on video by police. Let's just see whether there is a relevance there or whether he's just a sort of a, a coincidence. Is he relevant? Page of Cups, the Emperor in reverse, and the Lovers. Yes, he is relevant. Okay, so we've got here um, introspection, um, creative insight, <laughs> I nearly forgot, and arrival of a message. We are, with the Emperor in reverse, we've got uh, this uh, domination kind of element. 
and then with the the lovers we've got the merging of two as one this is the conspiracy this is the um the controlling element so um you can even call it you know like the hitman but it's a conspiracy which means that we've got two at least two people involved here and then we've got the union between them and together they actually create a conspiracy to dominate the situation here you've got um, the creative insight is and is um, and the arrival of a message is about being able to to look at ways to make something happen and to communicate together and then the domination is the plot itself and then the marrying up of the two so it could be that the man in the in the video was carrying out the wishes of someone else or that um, actually I'm not even sure if it was a man sorry the police were not sure if it was a man but it, it seems to me that it is a man that that they were carrying out the wishes of someone else or that they were one of the people who had the very strong feelings and were carrying it out but they were the person who was responsible so it seems the police are on the right path by actually maintaining that person as a suspect as well one thing that we know for sure when it comes to this case as an example is that money can't buy you happiness all it can buy you is stuff so there you go thank you so much for watching i love knowing you're here and i'll see you in my dreams bye